This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com. Speaking with Isabella Blake Thomas on her newest film. Isabella, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to do this interview. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I'm super excited to talk about your newest film, The League of Legend Keepers. Um, I have been following your work for some time now, and I'm a, a huge fan. Tell me. Oh, how thank you, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell me, how did you first get your start in acting? What was it that led you to this art form, and um, what's kept you in it? Because I know acting is something that a lot of people would like to do, but not everybody can you know, is cut out for, what is it that drew you to it and and what is it that keeps you involved? Yeah, um, I started out actually, my mum used to teach drama, she used to run a theatre company back in the UK Um, and so from a really young age I was kind of around the acting and the drama and the production side of theatre and I just realised from a really, really young age that that I loved doing that, I loved the idea of being able to be different people and play for a living And so someone suggested that I should go out and audition, so I did. It was an open casting call in the UK for a kids' TV show, and I booked it as a presenter at the age of four, and everything kind of just dominoed from there. And I've been fortunate fortunate enough to have an incredible career, everything leading up to where I am today. And I've just been given the most phenomenal opportunities, and that's definitely helped keep my... uh, my excitement for the industry going is these incredible opportunities. So I've got to work with some great people and learn so many things. Uh, and yeah, I think just to be honest, I live in LA now and being in LA is another thing that really keeps that excitement going because it's just so magical. I mean, I live right by the beach and being able to drive into Hollywood every day and see the Hollywood sign. I mean, there's nothing really better than that. <laughs> I would have to agree. I would definitely, definitely agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what uh so you've done so many ro- roles and um your work is so diverse what is it that helps you to get in the, get into the mindset of the role that you're portraying is there a, a certain ritual or a routine that you do to kind of help you get prepared I mean, it totally depends on what role um if I'm doing a character that's super lighthearted and not to care in the world I don't really need to do crazy amounts of preparation when it comes to like the emotional level of things because if it's a surface level character it's the surface level amount of uh, research I always have a set story in my mind of backstory just so I kind of understand for me as an actress what my relationship to the other people in the scene are do I like them do I not like them little questions like that that just kind of help me bring the character to life Uh, If I'm doing an emotional character that has lots of uh, problems or difficult family history or just difficult history of any kind, I definitely do the preparation. uh, If they're a historical figure, of course, especially I I look into that. Uh, But I think what I love about acting, what I've learned kind of throughout my career to where I am today, is that it's all about what you as the actor and the performer bring to each role. And that is the reason that certain people will book characters and not others and it's not necessarily just about the look it can be purely oh this person has had this experience in their life they were able to bring that to the character and that's the reason they booked it so I think there's definitely amounts of preparation that go into it to bring that character to life but in the end it's about what each actor and actress can bring to the character on their own through their life experiences. I love it I love it in in terms of gearing up for these characters has there ever been a, a character or a role that you've struggled to, I I guess, immerse yourself into? Uh, I wouldn't say struggled. I say the most challenging leading up to where I am is uh, a movie I did called The Blimp Trap. I had to play an autistic girl. That was definitely a challenge uh, because I'm not autistic, and so I had to really do the research, and this girl's very, very far in the spectrum, and so she's very very autistic which meant I had to do a lot of research on mannerisms and characteristics and so that was definitely a challenge for me I wouldn't say it was a struggle because it anything that's different from everyday life is 
what an actor loves because it kind of pushes you to become a better performer and a better entertainer. Uh, I did a lot of research watching the movie Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman because there's a fine line with movifying things and then real life. And I wanted to make sure that I was portraying his character, the character Billy, who was the autistic girl, properly and with respect as well, and not just doing the quote-unquote Hollywood version. I love it. Yeah, that you're right. I mean, it's it's definitely when you study this show yourself approved, I, I think that it, it actually shows in your work and people, you know, people can tell. Um, in, in terms of films or uh, other actors, um, who would you say or, or what would you say are some films or some actors that have kind of helped to shape and define your style of um, being a thespian? Actors that I've met and worked with or actors that are just like idols and inspiration? Um, I, I suppose both. Both. Okay. Uh, well, I can start off with actors that I idolize. Um, Julie Andrews and Dustin Hoffman, they are very high up my list, uh, probably the top <laughs> of my list, uh, due to their incredible skill and the length of their career and careers. Uh, kind of on the younger side of things I really love Emma Stone I think she's got an incredible variety and diversity of what different characters she can play so I, I really love watching her uh now let's see who, who have I worked with? I was able to work with Helena Bonham Carter on a TV movie back in the UK called Enid and that was just a phenomenal experience because I later went to watch Alice in Wonderland when it was released and I just remember being in awe that I'd been able to meet Helena Bonham Carter and even to this day, I think it's just as such a little girl that I was. I was about six. I think I'd love to be able to go back now and really appreciate it even more for meeting her. Uh, but she's definitely helped shape me. I was able to watch her on set, which I think it's interesting. I, I think a lot of people that have shaped me are people that have shaped me in ways that I don't even know and don't even consciously realize. And just being able to observe other talented actors and actresses on set really just teaches you things and you're always picking new things up as you go on set so i say anyone that i've worked with has taught me things whether it's things not to do or whether it's things to do i've learned something from every set and every actor i've worked with that's awesome yeah i love it because you know like they say experience is the best the best teacher um to date what would you say has been your your most beloved project that you've worked on or is there one in particular a, a film in particular that you just particularly hold in the regard of like, you know, most loved? Uh, well, I know I'm most known uh, from my, my following, I'd say through Once Upon a Time on ABC. And that was definitely a very loved experience for me as well because that was my favorite TV show. And so to be on set with those characters that I've watched basically every day when I binge watch the show was kind of surreal. I'm walking around and seeing these characters and having to remind myself they're actually real people. Um, I, I loved working on that. Uh, most of my show or movie, that's a really tough one because it, it's like picking a favorite child or something like that. Right. It's <laughs> one I put so much energy and so much effort into that at the time and, and my latest project is kind of always my favorite because it's, a, it's my latest, and B, it'll be, to date, the most current that I put work into. So, for example, I just finished a Disney Plus movie uh, working on that, and so I'd say that one to date, but then you could have asked me last year and it would have been something different. So I think it changes quite frequently based on how much how much I'm working and what hard work I had to put into the project. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me about your 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 time on Once Upon a Time. Do you remember uh, the day that you were approached to audition for the role? Oh yes, very clearly. I also remember the day I booked it. I don't think I'll ever forget those days for the rest <laughs> of my life. Uh, I remember I was actually getting new headshots taken uh, by an incredible photographer called Jenna Willard, and she as she did the cover shoot for my EP and. 
I just love her to pieces. But we were actually doing my headshots that day that I got the audition through. And I remember crying that I'd just gotten the appointment because that was my Facebook show. And I had been working out for ages. Okay, so they've done this young version, they've done this young version, but they haven't done young Selena or young Regina. And so when that came through, I was like, oh my goodness, I can do this. And so my mum and I went out the very next day, dyed my hair bright red. I then went to the audition and I was like, excuse the fact that my head shot is different from my hair. I dyed it for this audition. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I had to be British in it, which was great because I am. And I remember when I booked it, I was at home with a friend of my mum's because my mum was actually already in Vancouver seeing a friend. And that's where they shot once upon a time. And so I found out while I was with my mum's friend. And I just remember being in tears, being so happy. And then it was like the following week, I, not even that, under a week, I flew straight up to Vancouver and started working. And it really was a dream come true. I feel like it's such a cliche to say that, but that was definitely a dream come true. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, it's you, the work that you did on there was amazing. And um, I wanted to ask you, because I know you've done television and film. Yeah. Um, do you Is there one that you prefer more so than the other, or do you like them both equally? I like them both equally. I know that's very different for everyone. For me, it totally depends on what character I'm playing, to be honest with you. I think I love being able to sink my teeth into a good character that's got some depth and some problems. Um, and I know that kind of sounds amusing, but that's, that's like an acting dream is to be able to do that because you really get to bring someone to life. Uh, and I think as well nowadays, TV and film are kind of merging. If you look at miniseries on on um, networks like HBO, they're very much like movies each episode. And the budgets are like movies and the way the, the film is. And I think unlike the past, that movie and TV actors are very much able to be crossed because the acting is the same now. Uh, it's not very similar. So I think when I, if I was to pick one, it's still kind of saying the other because they're so similar. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. The uh, the advancement in technology has really leveled the playing field. And so a lot of television series do have that, that uh, movie feel. And so, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's just amazing. Um, I want to talk about your newest film. Uh, this was really cool. It was very, very fun. Um, and it had so many, so many good, um, I, I felt like it had so many good takeaways, even for, you know, a movie that, you know, is geared towards entertainment. Um, tell me, um, what was it like for you working on this film? On, on Lee? Yes. Yes. Cool. I just wanted to clarify. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so on, so on League of Legend Keepers, um, it was a movie that I had started working on, um, actually a couple of years before we even went into production because my mum and I had realized on, on a Halloween that there had been no Halloween movies for kids my age. Uh, I should say young adults, teens, um, cause I was about 13. And it was, they were either paranormal or it was Mickey Mouse goes trick or treating. So there was nothing really in the middle. And so we wanted to close that market gap and really kind of create a movie that could be shown every year, but also to families and not kind of scar kids for life. Um, it's really cool to see how far it's come, especially since we shot it a couple of years ago. And to, the fact that it's being released this year is just, it's kind of surreal. I mean, we got the DVDs through the other day uh, to our to our house in our mailbox. And it's just the craziest thing, seeing your face on a DVD cover. I think it's everyone's dream at some point in their life. And you go to the store, you see DVDs and you go, oh, I want that to be me. And it's kind of weird that it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it was a phenomenal project. And to see it come to life from the writing on the page and the idea in my head was, I mean, I say surreal and it's like, there's no other word to describe it because it really is. It's literally like being in a dream and suddenly one day you feel like you're going to pinch yourself and wake up, but then you don't. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be really really trippy. I mean, I would imagine so. Um so what is it that keeps you so humble? I you know, I, I don't know you personally, but um mm -hmm. just you know, hearing and and seeing your other interviews and 
also the work that you do. And I mean, I, I would say in a lot of your films, you're, you know, you are, you know, essentially a, a lead. Um, what is it that keeps you humble and that keeps you grounded? My mom, and I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but it really is my mom. She's raised me in a way that meant I'm always very grateful for everything I have and all the opportunities I have because I know that it, not everyone gets these opportunities, and I'm very fortunate for where I am and for where I live and for what I do and for the people around me. And I always say fortunate and not lucky because even though I'm doing all these things, it wasn't just random one day I wake up and I'm here. It's taken a lot of hard work. And I think because I've put in that hard work and that effort, that's another reason I'm very grounded is because I'm able to appreciate the hard work I've done and hard work other people have done to help me get where I am. Uh, and, and to be able to witness that definitely helps me stay humble. Love it. I love it. What's the, the biggest takeaway that you want people to to get from the work that you do? You know, when someone is looking at your, your films or, or work that you've done on television, um, what do you want them to take take away from, from the work you've done? It changes from project to project because it all depends on what the project method is. Uh, as me as an actress, though, just as a person, ah. Uh, I want people to take away from my acting. I guess, I know, and I know this sounds cheesy again, but anything is possible because it really is at this point, especially in this day and age with technology and everything in life. Everything really is possible. Uh, if, if you're willing to put in the hours and set your mind to those goals, anything is possible. So I say that's probably one of the big things for me. I love it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I think the sky's the limit uh, if you put put your mind to it. Um, I want to jump ahead just for a second. Yeah. Um, I know that you, you have an EP out, and um, music is something that, that you, you do. Um, you're a songwriter and a singer. Tell me a little bit about uh, about your newest EP. What, what went into it? What was the writing process like? Yeah, I have currently released a, a what do you call it? A single and two EPs. Uh, they're all on Spotify and all on all the music platforms. The first EP was kind of a little bit more pop, a little bit more electronic, if you will. I wanted to showcase that side of me, but then my latest EP, Painless, is definitely it's an acoustic EP because that's how I write my songs. It's just me and a guitar, and I wanted to show people, hey, this is just me, very raw, very stripped down. Uh, please be kind. <laughs> I think <laughs> releasing music is so personal to anyone. Uh, and to me, it's like releasing a diary in a journal. Uh, and it's as if I'd written a full journal and published it in Barnes and Noble. That's what it feels like to me putting my music out there. Uh, and I'm very grateful that everyone has liked it so far. Uh, Cause I know not everyone's so lucky in that way, but so far people seem to like it, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, music's very, very special to me. It's the way I express myself other than film. It's, uh, I feel like it's almost more personal than film because it's very much about my real life experiences and not just me bringing my real life experiences into someone else's life. It's me just expressing them as Isabella. Uh, and yeah, I think I've always loved music. I've always loved singing. My mum and I sing together all the time. I started playing guitar maybe six years ago, seven years ago now. Uh, and before that, I played a multitude of different instruments, testing them out and seeing which one oh, I found. Wow. And then I found guitar, and I was like, whoa, this is fun. And that just kind of became my love. And then I started piano and ukulele a couple of years after that. But for me, it's just any way I can express myself. And I just happen to be lucky enough to find that in acting and in music. I love it. So um, were you self-taught in these instruments, or did you have help? Uh, I had a guitar teacher and a piano teacher. I self-taught myself the ukulele because there are only four strings and it's it's kind of easy. I can Google the chords online. Um, yeah. But with guitar, it's a little bit more complex than the piano. So I did have a teacher for those. Uh, he's a phenomenal teacher. And he actually helped me write, uh, I think, my very first song I ever wrote, uh, which hasn't been released, but it's my very, very first song. He kind of helped me figure out melodies and chord progressions and stuff like that. And he was amazing. Uh, he doesn't live here anymore, unfortunately. He lives in Taiwan, so I don't get to see him much. But 
<laughs> yeah, he definitely helped me. Uh, and he's one of the reasons I, I love music. When I was younger, I went through a phase of not enjoying music theory at all because I didn't have a great music theory teacher. But then I found my guitar teacher and he made it fun again. And here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a journey. <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. Um, so I did watch um, um, the music video for Painless, and um, I thought that it was really, really neat. Did you um, did you come up with the the concept, the idea of the video? Uh, which video exactly? Just so I know, because oh. I think I have two out right now. Oh, I I think. Yes, um yes, um your for your single uh blame, um yeah. the the con the concept of it, um, did you come up with it? I did. Uh actually just to kind of go into that a little bit more, blame was originally not written about um a relationship. Uh the message behind it was different and I d I don't go into full detail on that, but it was a different message and I, I made it because it was later in my life when I released it, I made it about a relationship because it was more relatable for people to kind of experience and to listen to. Uh, and that was kind of how the music video concept came about was because I kind of just went from that progression of the relationship and where can we go with this? And it was really, the essence of the story never changed. It was more just about the subject. The essence has always been about the memories and looking back and guilt and things like that. And no matter what the subject is, that essence never changed. I was lucky enough to be able to work with Matt Cornett for that video. Uh, he's a great actor. He's on High School Musical, the musical, the series right now for Disney Plus, and he he was a blast to have on set. There's a behind the scenes video as well, and you can kind of see how much fun we had. And he put up a vlog as well from the, the day of shooting, and it was just it was a great fun set to be on. And again, that goes back to the surrealism of the fact that it was my music and that it's my video, and it's kind of cool. <laughs> um, especially everyone seems to like it, and it's had great views and reviews on YouTube. Uh, yeah, the story of it, though, I wanted to just showcase the essence of the, the song in a way that maybe the music couldn't. I see. I love it. Yeah, it, it was really... I thought that it was... I mean, I thought it was an amazing music video. And oh, I think what's so cool about it is, you know, nowadays, I mean, the art form of music videos have kind of been lost in translation. Um, but to see a good music video, it really, I feel like it connects you with the song. It yeah. more so connects you with the song. And so it was really neat to to, to see that. Um, yeah, thank you. I think um, I wanted to show that kind of the thought process that had gone into that subject uh, of the song versus just doing incredible visuals which is so easy to do and so amazing to do and I congratulate anyone who does because getting some of those beautiful visuals of helicopter shots of LA is very very difficult to do but for my music personally I really want to tell stories from my head in those music videos because it's a way of showing people this is this was what my vision was and it's still how people receive my music is up to them and what they see and what they their take on it is up to them. But I wanted to show them what my take on it was so that they had a kind of a foundation so they could understand who I was. Absolutely. I I wanted to ask you, um, is there a style of music or a particular artist or band that you draw um, your influence from? Uh, it's changed. Uh, even from the release of my first single, my first single, the inspiration came from the song uh, Ho Hey by the Lumineers. Uh, I really like that folky vibe of the guitar, but still having a couple of different instruments in there. So I got that inspiration from there. My second, e my first EP, uh, so my second release, had different influences on each of the songs. Uh, all of my songs have such different vibes to them, like even just reading them in my songbook, that I didn't really specify on the, on the EP having a vibe. It was there other than it being more pop it was just each song had its own feel and then obviously with painless it's an acoustic ep but even then the songs definitely had influence from different artists i think my number one musical influence at the moment is cd rexa i've been obsessed with her music for the past couple of months and i've been <laughs> listening to her a lot because her vocal range is the same as mine uh when i'm singing her songs so it worked out um but but yeah it's 
in the influence changes depending on who I'm listening to and what music comes out. And it's totally about how I feel as well when I'm recording because I can have one idea when I'm writing the song and then I get to recording it and my emotions change, my view on the song has changed, and so my influence will change. Ah, okay, okay. I wanted to, uh, to jump back just for a quick, quick second. Um, yeah. I know that you've got... Um, you said that um, League was, I believe it was finished um, last year. Yeah. Do you know um, when when the release date, the public release date will be? It is. It's December 10th. Ooh, nice. Yeah, nice. so very, very soon. It's very exciting. <laughs> yes. And so I'm guessing it'll be available on uh, VOD and... Yeah, it'll be available everywhere um and for specific information in the next week or so uh my production company website mother and daughter ent dot com will have the links as well to where you can find it uh just to kind of make it easy for people to find them all in one place love it i love it tell me so you work very closely with your mother um i do it's you know and and some of the work that you've done you know includes you know um suicide awareness and and some other things um how this partnership uh it's not something that everybody can pull off um yeah but you and your mother you do it so seamlessly um how do you how do you guys what's the secret behind the magic (laughs) um well we have a great relationship uh in real life as well as we do professionally so i think that definitely helps. I mean, I know what she's thinking before she even knows what she's thinking, which is definitely something you need when you're when you're running a set. Uh, I am fortunate enough to have her as a mentor, and so when I'm working with her, I'm also learning from her. And I think she'd say this too that she's learned some things from me, which I think is is fantastic. Um, I love that I can teach her things, um, but. Yeah, I say our relationship is just so great personally that when when we're working together, it's even stronger because we both love the entertainment industry so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think you know when you're able to to find a you know a loved one, whether it's a family or a friend, you know somebody that can um, help you, you know, on your journey, your career you know, in the entertainment industry, it's something, it's so rare, it's so beautiful, and it's it's something you should always hold on to because, you know, not every actor or actress has that, that opportunity. So I, I think it's really special when you do, you have that and it works. It's just, there's nothing like it. Yeah, 100%. Well, Isabella, what, uh, what's in the works that you can tell us about? Do you have any... Uh, other upcoming projects that you can tell us about? I do indeed. Uh, I'm excited to say that we are working on uh, the next movie in the League of Legend Keepers series. I can't specify what it's about, but it's definitely in the works. Uh, I'm working on a movie that I will be filming next week, actually. It's a true story about a friendship I had with a 100-year-old woman and like the, the trade deadline and Bryce will be releasing who's in that as well. Um, so that's still kind of under wraps, but we are working on that. Uh, the Disney movie I shot, Disney Plus film, Secret Society is Second Born Royals. I play Princess January. That'll be out in 2020, so keep an eye out on Disney Plus for that. Uh, we're working for Mother and Daughter Entertainment. We're working on a short form series, uh, another short and another feature next year, I believe, if I'm correct on that. But our entire slate is on our website, themotheranddaughterent.com. But, yeah, I'd say as well, my socials have – I'm very open on them, so they have all the information and stuff that I'm working on just in case my memory is failing. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. And what are your social handles? They are – Instagram is Isabella underscore B underscore T, so like Blake Thomas. Uh, that's the same for Twitter, and my Facebook is just Isabella Blake Thomas. Love it. I love it. Isabella, thank you so much. I, I'm all out of questions, but I wanted to open the floor to you if there's anything else you'd like to say to our listening audience. Um, well, about new music, actually, I just remembered. I have a remix 
of one of my songs being released on Christmas Day, ready for New Year's. So oh, that wow. will be out. Um, it's I haven't done like the official announcement on uh, on socials yet. I've just kind of been dropping it into interviews. So that will be out uh, on Christmas Day. Then I, I will be working on an album in the new year as well, hopefully to release 2020 or very, very early 2021, depending on how long recording takes me. Ah, I love it. I love it. Um, and the song, it'll, will it will be available um, in the Google Play Store as well as iTunes? It will indeed. It'll be available anywhere you can get your music. I love it. Isabella, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Guys, that was our exclusive interview with uh, Isabella Blake Thomas. She's got some great things on the way. We'll put the links uh, to her social media in the body of this post. If you're listening to us on iTunes, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, Google Play users, uh, if you've got an Android phone, you can also subscribe by going to the Google Play Store, searching music, search for a name. Um, once you search for a name, you can download and you can listen all free of charge. Uh, we're also available on Roku. Um, just go uh, to the Roku channel store for your Roku Smart TV. Search for our name. Once you search for our name, you can download the app and begin watching. Uh, we have over 200-plus hours of original content programming and interviews, all free of charge. Thank you so much, Isabella. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Fabulous. And any time, just, just shoot me uh, an email or whatever, any time you need anything. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Cool. Have a wonderful night. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.